Hi class, my name is Mrs. A, and this is me in the picture, Ta -da! and here I am sitting in the classroom. I really, really wish I could be there this week, but unfortunately, I am still recovering from some surgery that I had, and I will explain in just a moment. So if you notice, my voice sounds a little high. Sometimes my children like to say I sound like Elmo. Hee <laughs> hee! So my voice can change quite a bit. Sometimes he gets very tired, and when he gets tired, he gets a little high-pitched. So um, the reason why this happened, this is, is because last fall in the school year, last year, I was hit by a car in my car. So I was in a car accident and unfortunately I was injured and my neck was hurt. So I had to get surgery over the summer and it is making my neck feel so much better. But unfortunately, there was something that happened. I lost my voice. So I traded the pain for the loss of my voice. I kind of feel like Ariel. So that is why I'm going to be using a headset, speakers, and some ways to make sure that you can hear me in the classroom. This will not be permanent. I will eventually get my voice back, but it needs to heal. So it is really important that you listen for my voice and pay attention, okay? Because if I yell too much, it could actually cause my voice to not heal as quickly as I need it to. So if you hear this noise, that means you must be at a level zero, okay? So if Mrs. A rings the bell, I need your eyes and ears on me, eyes on A, as I like to say, that rhymes, and I need you at a slanted a zero with a bubble in your mouth at your assigned seat and your assigned table color, which we will go over in just a little bit. But you must be at a level zero. If you hear the bell ring and you are not at a level zero, this is not a wise choice. You will face consequences. So a little bit about your teacher. My favorite color is teal. I have three kids. Their names are Hayden, Drake, and Mabel. Hayden is going into kindergarten. Drake's going into fourth grade. And Mabel is going into junior high and sixth grade, which is really, really exciting and emotional for all of us. My favorite food is steak. Yum, yum. I lived in Michigan until I was 15 years old. And when I was in high school, I moved to New Jersey and I finished high school. I graduated high school and college right outside New York City. I used to go to New York City all the time, and we used to swim in the Atlantic Ocean. I loved it. I have a lot of great memories there, but Michigan is still my home, and that is why I returned. I've lived in Austria as well because my dad is from there, and ich spreche kleine Deutsch, which means I speak a little German. And once upon a time, I also lived in Florida. Home sweet home. So this is my husband. This is Mr. A. He works at a place called Motor City Power Sports, which is actually just a few miles down from school. So it's really nice. I can always call Mr. A if he can help me with something. He likes to save the day. So you may see Mr. A sometimes in the classroom if he needs to bring me something, or maybe we have somebody that is not listening and I have to call the big guy. I'm just kidding. Hopefully that won't happen. But this is our new home. We just bought a home. And on the right side, it's this vehicle is called a slingshot. And this vehicle is sold at the shop my husband works at. They also sell motorcycles, and that is the thing that my husband is passionate about. I am passionate about art, and he is passionate about motorcycles and dirt biking. So all of my children dirt bike with their dad, and here is a picture of them dirt biking. And on the left-hand side, you can see Mr. A doing a sweet jump. Mrs. A used to be a graphic designer. I used to do marketing and graphic design for big companies like Libby Glass, Identicom Signs, these companies you've probably never heard of, but actually you see their things every day. For instance, when you go to Subway, if you've ever seen one of those TV screens of your food listed up there, where you can see the items of the food that you want to order, Mrs. A used to help design this. Also, if you've ever had a glass of water, in that glass, if there's a little letter with the, the cursive letter L at the bottom of the glass, then that's the company that Mrs. A used to work for. And I used to help design logos and all kinds of different websites and all kinds of different graphic work for that company. But the thing is, I kind of grew tired of sitting at a desk. So eventually I got more interested in working with children and creating with kids. And that is why I became a teacher. My family is a huge fan of Lilo and Stitch. And the reason is, is because Mr. A and Mrs. A, our birthdays are June 26th, which is 626, which that's Stitch's name before he meets Lilo. So that's why we love Lilo and Stitch. So here is some example of some of the graphic work I actually did for Mr. A's dirt bike. 
I actually had the opportunity to do a stitch art party over the summer. So I host art birthday parties and I could always do yours too. Um, but I do do art parties um, over the summer and through the school year on the weekends. And I do art camps as well. So that is what I do during the summer. Here's some examples, some of the artwork I've recently done. And as you can see, we have a new cool chair in the corner. This is called the Vincent Van Gogh chair. And this chair is painted by me. And I painted it as the starry night in Vincent Van Gogh. So this is the chair that we have in the corner. This chair is not to be hung out on. You do not sit and hang out and take a nap on this chair. This is only a chair that you can sit on with permission. And we'll discuss this further later on in the slides. Get to know your classroom. Welcome to the art classroom. When you sign, when you come to the art classroom, you are to be at a level zero on the blue line outside of the classroom by the bulletin boards. What does artist stand for? If you take a look at that worksheet you have, it says attitude. So write down attitude next to the letter A. Be positive and always try your best. This is so important. We always want you to try to stay positive. I know we have our bad days, but we need to focus on what is good. And what is good is art, and it can be exciting. And sometimes we can create and get our negative energy out in positive ways, like painting and drawing. Respect. Please be respectful of your classroom and everyone around you. We all are here to learn, think, understand, and demonstrate. So that means think about what it is you're creating. Don't just rush your assignments. I will be able to tell if you scribble, scrabble all over your artwork and you didn't take your time, and this will affect your grade. Eyes for imagine, please. This is a place where you can think and create all on your own. Be creative, be a dreamer, it's okay. Spick and span, please, 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 please listen to the teacher, follow directions, and make sure your area is always clean and picked up and looks just the way it did when you entered the classroom. Target, follow directions and stay on target. That means listen to the teacher and make sure you're on task. When you walk into the classroom, you're gonna see these slides up. Each slide is going to have the grade level. This is the example of third grade, and it says, please sit down at a level zero. When you come in, you are going to be assigned to a colored table. These tables is where you're going to be sitting. So always remember where you sit. Make sure you know what color table you are sitting at and at what, set, what chair you're sitting at. So you will be sitting down at a level zero, and this slide will be up on the board. You will see a doodle now. Doodle now means it's time to draw. There will be dry erase boards and dry erase markers at your table if you see a doodle now. That means you need to get out your dry erase board and start drawing at a level zero. And on the board, it'll tell you what it is you are to doodle. This example says to draw your favorite art supply. So that could be a pencil, a ruler, glue, paintbrush, paint, anything you like that you know you use in the classroom. Once that time is up, then we will dig into the lesson. The lessons that we learn will be up on the board and Mrs. A will be discussing them with you. We will have to discuss them which means you need to be at a level zero and follow directions. As I stated, each table is assigned a table color. You have center caddies with art supplies in them that have the assigned color of your table. So if you ever not get lost or confused on what table color you are, simply look at the caddy of the table or look up to the ceiling and you will see that each table has a color crayon hung up on the ceiling, thanks to Mr. A, and it will have the color that matches the caddy. This is the table that you are going to be assigned at. So if you were the yellow table, always make sure that you are assigned to your Mabel yellow table seat. Stop! You're going to notice that Mabel, my daughter, painted these awesome rainbow cabinets. It is washable. It comes off. Please do not touch, scratch, lean up against my cabinets because it could possibly rub off on you or you could rip off, scratch off the paint. And I would be very sad if I see this happening. There will be consequences. I have found locks on my doors this year. The reason is, is because most of my older students started going and helping themselves to art supplies. We cannot do this. This is not safe and it is not right. These supplies are only to be used by the teacher. And that is me. These supplies were mostly purchased by myself or by the school. And it is very costly to constantly supplement these art supplies due to negligence, which means due to students just dumping them or taking them without permission. So please stay away from these cabinets unless I said it was okay to do. As I said, here are your caddies. You can see all the glue is in one caddy. Crayons are in two caddies, and then I have this tub. And you're probably wondering what that tub is. 
these supplies need to stay this way. Do not put a glue stick with a cap off inside the crayon box. That would make me very sad. Make sure caps are on. No fish out of water is what I like to say, because if fish are out of water, they can't breathe. Caps on markers and on glue sticks, please, because they will not survive without their caps. Inside these bins are your dry erase markers. We will also be using them for outlining and other, other art projects. These are very, very special to our classroom. We need to respect them deeply. So that is why they are in these tubs and they must have their caps on. So put the caps on and make sure that they go back in these tubs with the cap on and back into the bin. This is what we will be using also for Doodle Nows. Up on the board, you see the classroom expectations. You are to use kind words and actions in this classroom. You are to follow the social contract. You are also to ask questions, ask permission before leaving the room, and clean up your areas. And always, always, always do your best. Elements of art. You're going to see up on the one wall that we have the elements of art. These are all the steps and processes that we do in art. So we are going to be learning a lot about this. But this is something you can always look up to and reference to if you are lost or confused on a project. Hand signals. Let's get into how we get Mrs. A's attention if we need something. Hachu! You can dab or simply tap your nose if you do not feel comfortable dabbing, which is okay, to get tissue. All right, sometimes I may not have tissue. Always ask the teacher first. I may just need to send you to the bathroom or you can just go get yourself a tissue. Drink. Holding up the number two is a drink signal in my classroom. I want you to understand, our classroom time is very short in specials, and most of you get bathroom breaks with your homeroom teachers. I do not want a lot of people asking to go to the bathroom or to get a drink. These things are to be done outside of the specials classrooms. If it's an urgent need, like you're having a coughing fit or have a cold, that is understandable. But for the most part, you shouldn't need to go get a drink. Questions. Always raise your hands and ask a question. Do not shout out and take your turn. If somebody else is talking, please do not talk over them. We cannot hear you if you talk over people and they cannot be heard either. We all need to respect each other. Please raise your hand before you shout. Pencils. If you need a pencil for some reason your pencil broke or all the pencils are dull at your table section, then I can give you a new pencil. They will be in a sharpened area and I will show you later in the slide, but you must ask first before getting out of your seat. Office. Show me a fist bump for the office. Maybe mom forgot to bring your lunch and you want to hurry up and go and call her. Okay, that's fine. Give me a fist bump. Bathroom. All right, this sign is not up on the wall yet, but hopefully I will print it out soon. But this is the signal for bathroom. Please cross your fingers and show me you need to go to the restroom. This is my desk. You're going to see it says Wi-Fi, K, 1, and 2. I will explain this a little further, but this stuff is for the young fives, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And it will display all the assignments that we are doing. All right, my desk is my desk, and it is not for you to touch. You are not allowed to sit on my rolling chair or my chairs at my table. You are not allowed to touch my belongings. These things are very special to me, and I need them to teach and to do my job. If you simply take anything from this, there will be penalty. Please respect my environment. All right, you can see first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and it says I can. These are our I can statements where you can see what it is what we're learning in art, and there will be examples pinned up underneath. Over here is the drying rack. Now, this is really important. When you finish a piece of artwork that might have paint on it, you are not to just get up and run over to the drying rack. You need to wait. You must raise your hand and say, Mrs. A, I am finished. Then you will take two hands and place them underneath your artwork and walk slowly because you could drop your artwork, fall on the floor, or swoosh it on somebody and get paint all over the place or on a friend. And that would make Mrs. A very sad and your classmates sad. And your artwork will not be looking very good and you will be sad. So please always ask permission before going to the drying rack. I will typically call you by tables to put your artwork away unless you finish early. You must put your hands underneath, two hands underneath and walk very slowly to the drying racks. And I will tell you exactly which rack is yours. All right, this is my stool, not your stool. Please do not sit on it. Now you're going to see these signs everywhere. It says, before you leave, make sure all those caps are snapped on, no fish out of water. All supplies are put away. Clean up the floor and put all your trash away. That means take a look on the floor. If there's pieces of paper or garbage on the floor or art supplies on the floor, please put them away. 
push in your chairs. I will send you back to your tables if you do not push in your chair and clean up your work. So make sure you do it the first time. And don't forget, you must always, always, always put your name and your class code on your work. But what, what is my class code, Mrs. A? I'm going to explain that in just a moment. Remember, if you want a grade, you should have put your name on it. You see this over here with lots of arrows to remind you name and class code before you turn in your work. Always, always, always. So what is your class code? So let's take a look. If you're a kindergartner and Miss Miller is your teacher, mm, M is for Miller. So then your class code would be K for kindergartner and M for Miller. Now, if you are a fourth grader, your fourth grade, so you are four for fourth grade. And then the first letter of Miss Miller's name is N. So we would put four N. Now, there are some grades, for instance, fourth grade is an example where we have two teachers with the same first initial. Then we jump to the last initial for some of those. And those classes, I will be informing you of who you are. We're simply asked a teacher. Those class codes are at my desk near the bulletin board hung up. And you'll be able to identify which class code yours is if you are confused. Simply raise your hand and ask a teacher. 4N stands for Fort Naylor. So if you're fourth grade and you have Ms. Naylor, it will be 4N. If you were in third grade and you have Ms. Robertson, it would be 3R. But like I said, Miss Naimi has an N as well, so we're going to write 4I for Miss Naimi. Stay away from this paper cutter. This is not safe for you to use. It is a large blade and it could really, really hurt somebody. You are never, ever, 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 ever allowed to use this paper cutter. Shh. Mona Lisa, quiet. Please be mindful. We have other teachers that are next to us. They are also learning and working in their classrooms. This is not a playground. This is art. We need to stay focused. We need to stay quiet. I want us to have fun. And sometimes if you are very quiet, I may actually put music on. But if we can't hear the music playing, you are too loud. And the music will be turned off. I like to turn on music. I do that for the classes that are doing their best. And I hope that that's every single class this year. Mona Lisa quiet means we need to be extra quiet. So if I ask you to be Mona Lisa quiet or you see me pointing to this sign, that means we need to be quiet. Eyes on teacher, mouths closed, and hands still. After I point to this and you still not get quiet, you'll get a warning of a bell and then it'll be time to put our heads down. This is our stitch corner. This is the calm down corner. This is where we go to chill out, dude. So if you ever make an unwise decision or you just simply need to calm down, your feelings are overwhelming you, this is where you will be sent. You are not allowed to go here if you want to hang out, sit down, or just take a nap. If you are not feeling well, I may tell you to go sit. But I will tell you right now, this couch is painted. It's pokey. It's not very comfortable. It's there to be sat on and just to help figure out how we can get back into the class and learn. If you are still not following directions after being into the calm down corner, you will be set to call home with me. I will either call home during break, you will be notified through the classroom dojo, or your homeroom teacher. Please stay on task. Let's not have this happen. If you see the supplies up on the wall by the board, this is where all a lot of our supplies are. You are not allowed to touch these supplies unless you have permission. I may assign one person from one color table to go grab these and pass them out to the class in the beginning of the class, but that is only if you have permission. Now, you may see it says RIP. Here lays Mrs. A's dead supplies. These are art supplies that no longer work. This is all our fish that are out of water that no longer can swim in the sea. So. If you have a dead art supply, you must raise your hand and tell me this is no longer working and I will be the one to put it in here. Now, over here is where our pencil sharpener is. You must, as you see the sign here, ask Mrs. A to get a pencil, sharpen your pencil. There should never, ever, ever be a reason that you would need to sharpen your pencil unless all of our pencils are dull and Mrs. A did not have somebody help her sharpen pencils that day. As you can see over here, all of our supplies on the counter are so neat and nicely organized. Please, please, please keep it this way. You are not to come help yourself to any of these supplies. You must ask permission and only one person at a time are allowed to receive two handout supplies or get one a supply. So if you're out of a pencil, you should be able to see these pencils will actually be over by the pencil sharpener table where the pencils are on the wall. And you'll be able to grab a fresh sharpened pencil and put your dull one back in the bucket. So there's no reason, like I said, to sharpen. Please take care of our pump brushes. As you can see, large brushes are in one bucket, smaller brushes are in another. That is how they stay, facing up. 
if you put a paintbrush facing down when it's wet, when it dries, it'll end up looking like this guy over here with a bad hair day. If you ever confuse, simply look at this poster to understand what a paintbrush should look like. Please treat our supplies nicely because once they're gone, they're gone and we no longer will be able to paint. Don't take the fun out of art. Now, as you can see on the left, again, the supplies are neatly put away. Over here on the right, we have these color rags. Each table is assigned a color rag. If you are on the green table, you will be using this green rag. Red, red, red rag. One person will be permitted to come over and grab a rag and, need, and rinse it out with water and use it to wipe their counters if they got permission from Mrs. A. Only if they have permission from Mrs. A. These rags are to be used. Once you are done with it, you must bring it back, wring it out, rinse it out, and give it a good squeeze so it's not sopping wet and put it back on this drying rack. Here is our sink. You are not allowed to go to the sink and wash your hands when you feel like it. You must ask permission. If you get up and help yourself, you could cause injury to yourself and others, and it is not safe. Please follow directions. You will get a chance to wash your hands, but you must wait your turn. I will give permission for each table color to wash their hands accordingly. One table color a person at the sink without permission at a time. Please make sure to put all supplies back. This is what they look like. So, like I said, one person from your table team will be bringing up the supplies and cleaning them or putting them away. Okay, and they must look like how they do in these photos. This is how our classroom needs to look. Nice, neat, and clean. Now, there are drawers of small paper and large paper. You are once again need to ask permission, but this is where extra paper is. If we make a noops or a mistake, Mrs. A, I need a new paper. I may just tell you, go to the small paper drawer or go to the large paper drawer. So now you know where they are. Please do not play with our supplies. They are not swords, they are not toys. Like I said, this is not a playground. Okay, you must ask permission and one student at a table at a time. This is our trash can. <laughs> so if you ever get confused with the garbage is, just look where Mrs. A sitting in a Bimoji gar garbage can. All right, and on the right hand side, this is a drawer. This is where I will have a lot of extra work. So if you finish early, you may go to these drawers and look for your grade. So if you're K, kindergarten, first or second grade is going to be in this purple crayon. Third, fourth, and fifth grade are in the teal crayon, and sixth, seventh, and eighth are in the orange crayon. So you may open up this drawer if you get permission and say, Mrs. A, I'm done with my work. What do I do now? I will say, go to the drawer and help yourself. And in there, you will find a bunch of extra artwork or coloring pages that you can work on. Each tape, each grade will be assigned a shelf. This is where we will keep our, arts, our artwork, and it will keep us organized. Last year, it got a little messy because we had the YMCA in our classroom. This year, hooray, we do not have that. So I should not have any issues this year with our organization of our artwork. Each shelf will be assigned for the grade and everybody will have a folder that will be placed in their artwork. Please do not go through this stuff without permission. You are simply to find your shelf and put your artwork there if you are given permission, one table color at a time. Up here is our more focus board. As you discuss moral focus with your homeroom teachers, if you ever need a reminder of what moral focus we are on, you can always look at the moral focus board and remember that all of these are important and we need to practice them every day in our classrooms. Here's the fun thing. If you can take a look, last year I had gems, but that got messy and problematic, so this year I made it a little more simple. You're going to see all of these magnets say a class code on them. So if you were to be in second grade in this Haas's class, then you will see this is your magnet. Everybody will start at the bottom. The goal is to reach the top. If you get to the top, then you may get a free drawing class or a special bonus reward from Mrs. A. The goal is to always stay on green so that you can get a free draw on a Friday class with Mrs. A. Now, if you end up on a red day, you may get a silent art or a writing assignment next time you come into my art class. Please do not make this happen. A bucks. So I'm still giving away A bucks that I had last year. If you receive one of these, that means you as the single class student did something great that day. Maybe your class wasn't the best, but you still were your best. I want you to know that I take notice. So then you will put your A buck in this bin at the end of the day when it's time to line up. So when I call your table to line up, that is when you will put your A buck in here. Do not go running up and putting your A bucket into this bucket without waiting till you are called to line up at the end of class. That is when you put your A buck in this bucket. If you do not follow that direction, you will lose your A buck, so do not do that. Make sure you write your name and your class code on the A buck and place it into the A bucket. I do a raffle and I'm going to do them monthly and that person, whoever is pulled, 
will win a prize and get it at the end of the day on a Friday. We will be learning a lot about lines and patterns. If you ever get confused on what a line or a pattern is, there's examples on the walls. Here's a little video about respecting our classroom environment. have to be safe. Take time to clean up. And now you can be an artist too. Woo All right. So There we go. So now when it's time to be called to line up, you're going to see that there is a line that says line starts here. And this is where you line up. All right, this is really important that you line up here. I'm so sorry, the slide's being silly now. All right, it is important that you line up here. Do not push, do not shove. You do not want to get hurt. Like I said, do not lean up a can against the cabinets and do not touch anything that is on the shelves near the sink or the art supplies, you are to stand with your arms to your sides at a level zero. I am on Instagram. If you ever want to look up and see if maybe your artwork was posted, it will be at Mrs. A is four. I have flyers that I can pass out to you as well if you're interested in getting on social media and seeing my social media pages. I'm also on YouTube, so a lot of the videos that I create will be on YouTube. So if you ever want to watch these at your own leisure, you can at home. My YouTube page is Mrs. A's for Art. Once again, all of this information can be seen in the hallway hung up, or you can ask for a flyer from me. This is the video that you're going to see at the end of class. When you hear these beep noises in this video, that means it is still warning sign for you to start finishing up, cleaning up, being at a level zero. The table that is at a level zero when this video is over may just win some A bucks. So here is the video just to simply watch so you know what to look for when you come into class and this video starts to play. It says, you have one minute to finish your work. So it will count down one minute so that you know it's time to start finishing up your artwork. You hear that beep? That beep means it's 30 seconds now. Your minute is now halfway over. So that means it starts to really, really finish up. This is the time to make sure your name is on your artwork and your class code is on your artwork and that your artwork is now turned in to Mrs. A. It's counting down, five, four, three, two, one. Beep. Okay, now this is the time to start cleaning up. When you hear this music starting to play and that beeping noise and you see this, it says put all art supplies back correctly. Crayons go in the crayon bin, pencils go in the pencil bin, markers with caps and put away in the right spots. Take a look on the floor for any garbage, put it away in the garbage can. This is when you are able to kind of move around a little bit and get your work put away and get everything cleaned up. Okay. 
So make sure your area is cleaned up, all the supplies are put away. If you are already done and you're sitting in zero at this point, you may just get yourself an Ava. Maybe you can help a shoulder partner. If you see a friend who's struggling and still has lots to clean up, please help your classroom. And if you do finish early, I may choose you to be the one to go help wipe down the tables. Now when you hear this beep and the sign turns yellow, it's time to be at your seats. This is the time you need to go return back to your seats at a level zero because we are almost ready to leave. It's time to relax, slow your mind, and get ready for our time to transition. Make sure when you sit down, you are not pushing or shoving, and that you are at a level zero sitting at a slant. Please relax and take three deep breaths. Mrs. A did a typo. It says breathe, breathe three times. When you hear this beep, that means I will start calling you by table colors. And if you are the table that's sitting quietly, maybe you got some ABUX. And now you are able to write your name and class code on that ABUX and quietly line up. So when you see this video, you know that is time to start following directions, have your eye on the teacher and clean up your space. All right, now I want you all to know I'm here for you. Anything you have to ask me, questions, anything that you're doing, or if you're feeling confused on anything, I'm here for you. Please just simply raise your hand or talk to me. All right, I love you all. I look forward to seeing you soon and meeting all the new faces. All right, have a good day, bye-bye.